All right, subtraction from left to right. Normally the way we're taught subtraction is to start at the right and cross out and borrow. So we see we can't do three minus eight, so what we're taught to do is cross out and borrow. Now 13 minus eight gives me five. And once again, I need to cross out and borrow because I can't do one minus five. So I cross out the three and borrow one. Now 11 minus five gives me six. And then two minus one gives me one. So I get this answer 165. All right, now the obvious problem with crossing out and borrowing is that it gets real messy. There's all these crossing out, borrowing. Okay, it's a real messy procedure. If I have a number, let's say 51 minus 28, if I have to cross out and borrow from a five, it almost looks like it could be an eight. So you see, crossing out and borrowing is real messy. It's an inefficient way to do your subtraction. So let's start with the problem that we just had, 323 minus 158. So subtracting from left to right kind of involves holding a number inside your head. So let's call this the inside of your brain. And what we do is this. I start over here at the left, 3 minus 1. Okay, I know 3 minus 1 is 2, so I hold this number 2 inside my head. But before I write it down, before I write down the 2, I ask myself, do I need to borrow 1? Yes, I need to borrow 1, because 2 minus 5 I can't do. So instead of writing a 2, I write the next number down from 2, which is 1, and then borrow 1. Now I ask myself, what is 12 minus 5? 12 minus 5 is 7, so I hold this number 7 inside my head. But once again, before I write it down, before I write down the number 7, I ask myself, do I need to borrow? Yes, I need to borrow. So instead of writing a 7, I write the next number down 6 and carry a 1. And then 13 minus 8 gives me 5. So this is the idea of subtracting from left to right. It teaches you that you could hold numbers inside of your head as you're working. It's kind of a better way to do math. Hold numbers inside your head before proceeding on. And you can see that it's less messy as well. So let's go through a couple practice problems using this method. And you'll see that it's superior to this method of crossing out and borrowing. It's real messy doing this. Okay, so here we're given a problem, 346 minus 253. Once again, we need to hold numbers inside of our head. And we start over here at the left. Okay, so 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1, so we hold that number 1 inside our head. But before I write that number 1 down, I ask myself, do I need to borrow? Yes, I need to borrow 1. So instead of writing 1, I write the next number down, 0. And borrow 1. Now 14 minus 5, 14 minus 5 gives me 9, so I hold this number 9 inside my head. But before writing that number 9 down, I ask myself, do I need to borrow? In this case, I don't need to borrow, so I could write that number 9 down. And then 6 minus 3 gives me 3, so I get my answer, 93. Okay, let's try again using a different, different problem. All right, 462 minus 278. Now I do this starting from the left, four minus two. Four minus two gives me the number two. So I hold that number inside my head. And once again, before writing it down, I ask myself, I look over to the next column, do I need to borrow one? Yes, I need to borrow one because I can't do six minus seven. So instead of writing down the number two, I write the next number down, which is one, and borrow one. Now 16 minus seven gives me nine. So I hold that number nine inside my head. And before writing that number 9 down, I ask myself, I look over to the next column, do I need to borrow 1? The answer is yes, because I can't do 2 minus 8. So instead of writing the number 9 down, I write the next number down, which is 8, and borrow 1. And then 12 minus 8 gives me 4, so I get my answer 184. And you can see this method is a lot cleaner. I'm not crossing things out and borrowing. I'm just writing little numbers here. All right, let's try again with another problem. All right, so 5,358 minus 2,463. Let's start over here at the left. Five minus two gives us three. So we hold that number three in our head. Once again, before I write that number three down, I ask myself if I need to borrow. The answer is yes, I need to borrow because I can't do three minus four. So instead of writing the number three, I write the next number down, which is two. Borrow one. 
13 minus 4, 13 minus 4 gives me 9. So I hold that number 9 inside my head. Before writing that number 9 down, I look over at the next column and ask myself if I need to borrow. And the answer is yes, because I don't do 5 minus 6. So instead of writing down the number 9, I write the next number down, which is 8, and borrow one. Once again, 15 minus 6 gives me 9. So I hold that number 9 inside my head. And I look over at the next column and ask myself if I need to borrow. In this case, I don't need to borrow, because 8 minus 3 I could do without borrowing. So I could write that number 9 down. Then 8 minus 3 gives me 5. So here's our answer, 2,895. So this is the basic idea of subtracting from left to right. Now I want to show you how the casting out 9s and digit sum, how we could check our answer if we make mistakes. So first, let's do this problem subtracting from left to right. 5 minus 3 gives me 2, so I hold that number 2 inside my head. And before I write it down, I look over at the next column. Do I need to borrow? Yes, I need to borrow. So instead of writing 2, I write the next number down, which is 1, and borrow 1. Now 11 minus 8 gives me 3, so I hold that number 3 inside my head. And before I write that number 3 down, I look over the next column and I need to borrow. So instead of writing 3, I write the next number down and borrow 1. Then 12 minus 9 gives me 3. So I get this answer 123. So for casting out 9s looking for mistakes, I erase these little marks just to not confuse you. You could leave those on your paper if you want, but I erase them just to make this clear for you. Now remember, a digit sum is when you add up all the numbers together. So 5, 1, and 2, that gives me 8. And now I take the digit sum of 389. Remember, you could cross out any number with the 9, so you could basically ignore this number 9. 3 and 8 give me 11. And then 1 and 1 give me 2. So the number 2 is the digit sum. 2 is the digit sum for 389. Next, I take the digit sum of the answer, 123. 1 plus 2 plus 3 give me 6. Here's what we do with our, here's what we do with our digit sums. You see our operation is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 2 from 8. Okay, the digit sum. 8 minus 2 give me 6. And you can see that the digit sum are the same. So the digit sum of the answer is the same as the digit sum, the subtraction of the digit sum of the operation. So that lets us know we get a right answer. Now something to note is that digit sums won't tell you when you get your answer right. It'll tell you if you get your answer wrong. In other words, if these numbers did not match, let's say I got a 5 here. Let's say this digit sum was a 5. Then I know 100% sure that it's wrong. If the digit sums do not match, then I know I get it wrong. Okay? So it'll give you a... It won't let you know when you get it right. It'll let you know when you get the answer wrong. And I'll show you why that is. Okay, so here's a problem I worked out. 161 minus 103. I got the answer 58. So let's do our digit sum. 1, 6, and 1. That gives me a digit sum of 8. And 103, that gives me a digit sum of 4. Okay, 5 and 8 give me 13. Taking the digit sum of 13, I get the answer 4. So 8 minus 4. Remember, we're doing subtraction. 8 minus 4 gives me 4. And these two digit sums match. But let's say I got the answer wrong. Let's say instead of 58, I got the answer as 49. Now, 49 is the wrong answer, but you can see that if I do the digit sum, 4 and 9, that's going to give me a digit sum of 4 also. And you can see that these match. So sometimes, even if the answers match, that the digit sum won't give you the correct... You won't be able to tell if it's right. Just because they match doesn't mean that you got it right. But... If they don't match, then you know 100% sure. If they don't match, you know 100% sure that the answer is wrong. So this will let you know when you get your answer wrong. It won't always let you know when you get it right, but it will definitely let you know when you get the answer wrong. We'll do more casting out nines for checking for answers as we go along. I'm going to teach you a couple more subtraction techniques. We're going to use casting out nines for addition, division, and multiplication as well. 
So you'll see how it works. With practice, you'll get very good at it. You'll let, it'll let you know when you get your answer wrong. Um, it's just a way to check your answers for mistakes without doing the same problem again. Because if you make a mistake when you're doing your arithmetic, if you go back and do the same problem again the same way, there's a good chance you're going to make that same mistake again. So this essentially gives you a way of checking without doing the problem over again.